Good evening, everyone. We are about to start the liturgy for this evening. Um, please know that the Mass tonight will be longer than normal, so uh, you might want to use the restroom uh, before we get started. Um, if you are an English speaker, we have worship aids available for you at the doors in the back. Uh, so please uh, take a worship aid. Um, if we run out, people can share. Um, bienvenidos a esta liturgia. Vamos a comenzar en un momento. Hay que recordar que la liturgia será un poco más larga que lo normal. Entonces ahora sería buen tiempo para utilizar el baño. Los worship aids que hemos, hemos imprimido son para las personas que hablan el inglés. A los hispanos que hablan el español, hay los libritos que siempre utilizan en las misas de domingo, los misalets. Entonces, si quieren seguir la liturgia, pueden utilizar esos. Tienen las oraciones de la misa y tienen las lecturas. The three readings. Por la, las tres lecturas que vamos a hacer en español son Génesis 22, Éxodo 14 y Isaías. At this point, um, we are going to make our way out to the Easter fire. So before anybody gets up, let me give you some instructions. We are going to start the Mass tonight outside at the Easter fire. There are people in the narthex who can direct you. And when we are finished in the Easter fire, we will come back in here to the church. So if you are unable to walk to the fire and come back, you can stay here. But everyone else uh, should stand up to depart when I let you, when I give you the sign, okay? Vamos a comenzar la misa esta noche afuera, donde hay el fuego de la Pascua. Entonces, si puedes, puede levantar y salir. Y hay personas dirigiendo en el vestido. Si no pueden caminar a esta distancia, pueden quedarse aquí en la iglesia. So at this point, I invite everybody to stand up and to go outside the Easter fire.
you can come a little bit closer if you'd like. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night on which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to His Word and celebrating His mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing His triumph over death and live with Him forever in God. Morning. O God, who through Your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of Your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray. Grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to Him and all the ages to Him, every age, forever and ever, Amen. And by his holy and glorious wounds, may our Lord guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and our minds. And now we will all follow the Easter candle into the church. There are girls standing at the doors and they will help you light your entrance candles. Forgot one thing, lighting the charcoal.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad. the 
darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to His holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, oh, oh wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, oh, happy fault, that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour, when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, The night shall be as bright as day, Dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night Dispels wickedness, washes faults away, Restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. Drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never did by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere until to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. extinguish your candles and be seated for the readings from sacred scripture. Holocaust on the height 
that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham caught sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the holocaust. Then the two then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on the top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yireh. Hence people now say, On the mountain the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, and not withholding from me your beloved son. I will bless you abundantly, and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of your enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord.
O oh God, Supreme Father, the faithful who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore, grant, grant me pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace with which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lectura del libro del Éxodo. En aquellos días dijo el Señor a Moisés, ¿por qué sigues clamando a mí? Diles a los israelitas que se pongan en marcha, y tú alza tu bastón, extiende tu mano sobre el mar, y divídelo para que los israelitas entren en el mar sin mojarse. Yo voy a endurecer el corazón de los egipcios para que los persigan y me cubriré de gloria a expensas del faraón y de todo su ejército, de sus carros y jinetes. Cuando me haya cubierto de gloria a expensas del faraón, de sus carros y jinetes, los egipcios sabrán que yo soy el Señor. El ángel del Señor que iba al frente de las huestes de Israel se colocó tras ellas y la columna de nubes que iba adelante también se desplazó y se puso a sus espaldas. Entre el campamento de los israelitas y el campamento de los egipcios, la nube era tinieblas para unos y claridad para otros. Y así los ejércitos no trabaron contacto durante toda la noche. Moisés extendió la mano sobre el mar y el Señor hizo soplar durante toda la noche un fuerte viento del este, que secó el mar y dividió las aguas. Los israelitas entraron al mar y no se mojaban, mientras los egipcios se lanzaron en persecución y toda la caballería del faraón, sus carros y jinetes, entraron tras ellos en el mar. Hacia el amanecer, el Señor miró desde la columna de fuego y humo al ejército de los egipcios y sembró entre ellos el pánico. Trabó las ruedas de sus carros, de suerte que no avanzaban sino pesadamente. Dijeron entonces los egipcios, huyamos de Israel, porque el Señor lucha en su favor contra Egipto. Entonces el Señor le dijo a Moisés, extiende tu mano sobre el mar para que vuelvan las aguas sobre los egipcios sus carros y sus jinetes. Y extendió Moisés su mano sobre el mar y al amanecer las aguas vol volvieron a su sitio. De suerte que al huir, los egipcios se encontraron con ellas y el Señor los derribó en medio del mar. Volvieron las aguas y cubrieron los carros a los jinetes y a todo el ejército del faraón que se había metido en el mar para perseguir a Israel. Ni uno solo se salvó. Pero los hijos de Israel caminaban por lo seco en medio del mar. Las aguas les hacían muralla a la derecha e izquierda. Aquel día salvó el Señor a Israel de las manos de Egipto. Vio la mano fuerte del Señor sobre los egipcios, y el pueblo terminó al Señor y creyó en el Señor y en Moisés, su siervo. Entonces 
Moisés y los hijos de Israel cantaron este cántico al Señor. Palabra de Dios. Cantemos al Señor The Lord calls you back. 
like a wife, forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth, and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment I hid my face from you, but with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of the earth of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. The word of the Lord.
who will make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
to you tomorrow. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe. And they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You see Jesus of Nazareth, crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. Everyone, bienvenidos a todos. I warned you guys that the Mass was going to be a little bit longer than normal, and so we're about a third of the way through. For the first time I went to an Easter Vigil Mass, I had a high school friend of mine who was not, who was not a Catholic, right? and he was coming because his girlfriend was coming into the church. And I remember looking over about halfway through the readings, and my friend had disappeared. <laughs> gone home. Right. So please don't be, uh, my friend, it won't be quite as long. Uh, but we did that. We did we did three Old Testament readings uh, tonight. Uh, that night with my friend, we did seven Old Testament readings. Okay. So, por favor, no se vayan. Please don't leave. Right. Uh, those of you who are guests here to St. Bernard this evening, maybe you're coming here with uh, to support a family or a friend who's coming into the church. Uh, welcome. Uh, some of you might have uh, questions about, you know, what to do when you're at a Catholic Mass if you've never been to one before. And as you've already seen, if you just stand when everybody else stands and sit when everybody else sits, right, you'll be, you'll be okay. When it comes to communion, uh, we as, as Catholics, we believe something that's very unique among all Christian denominations. We're one of the only denominations left that still believes what the early Christians believed, that when the bread and wine uh, is consecrated at Mass, it's no longer bread and wine anymore. It looks like bread and wine, but it becomes the body and blood of Jesus, just like Jesus looked like an ordinary man, but was really God and man both. So the same thing happens with communion. And we believe that as Catholics. So when people come forward to receive communion, they say amen, which means I believe, as in I believe what the church teaches about us. So if you're wondering about communion, what to do, if you're not a practicing Catholic, you can just remain in your pews during communion. Or you can, if you want to come and receive a blessing, you can notify us by crossing your arms when you're in the communion line. Okay. Everything else, just do what everybody else does. Okay. This night at the, the Easter Vigil, the reason why we have this Easter Vigil Mass is because the church has always remembered that it was on this night that Christ rose from the dead. That in the midst of the darkness, the light shone. He could not be held hostage by death, and so he conquered death. And so every year, the church has to celebrate this Easter Vigil. And it's on this night, above all other nights, that the church holds solemn. And it is on this night every year that those who are preparing to be baptized, confirmed, are received into the church. Why do we make such a big deal out of this night for all of these catechumens and candidates preparing to enter into the church? 
It's such a big deal because something is happening this evening that can never be reversed. It is happening once and for all, for better or for worse. I had a, a friend a number of years ago, and she, uh, you know, you guys probably, maybe you already know this, but as a priest, a lot of times people will share things with me that they don't really talk about with other people. And so sometimes people will tell me about miracles they've experienced or dreams that have been prophetic, miracles they've experienced. So sometimes I will interact with people who, for example, can, can see angels, can see demons. Sometimes with the saints, the saints are given this special privilege. And the saints can see spiritual realities like angels and demons, or they can read people's souls. And sometimes this happens with ordinary people as well. And so I remember I had a, a friend who, she had become a Catholic, and she told me how when she was growing up, she was not a Catholic, but she had this, she had this gift. She could see people's souls without talking to them. She could see when people would approach her, she could see inside of them. And she said that whenever people had some sort of darkness inside of them, it meant that they had committed some heinous act, or some heinous act had happened to them, or that they had abandoned faith in God, right? And she saw this darkness. And that when she saw people who were holy, that were close to God, she saw this, this brightness that would come forward from them. And she said the reason why she became a Catholic is because she came to a Catholic funeral. She'd never been to a Mass before. And I was talking a moment ago about the Eucharist and how it changes the communion. And when communion took place, when the priest was consecrating the bread and the wine, she said that she saw this blinding light that came from the altar. But of course, nobody else could see but her. And so she realized there was something special about what was taking place at the altar. And she went home and she researched and she discovered what Catholics believe about the Eucharist and about communion. Something takes place at Mass that cannot be reversed. The bread and the wine... This finite object becomes a divine reality, a divine person. Changed forever, never changes back. That's why we keep the Eucharist in our tabernacles. Something similar is happening this night. The Bible talks about the mark of God. The mark of God. You might remember the story of Adam and Eve, the first human beings, and about their sons, Cain and Abel. And you remember that Cain, out of jealousy towards his brother, he, he smote his brother Abel. The first, mort the first murder in history. And Cain, when he repented of his sin, he pleaded with God for mercy, and God marked him on his forehead. And God swore to Cain that because he had the mark of God on his forehead, nobody could touch him or punish him or kill him. The mark of God. Later on, many centuries later, the Israelites were living in Jerusalem. And there was foreign armies coming to invade Jerusalem and destroy the temple. And many people died who were living in Jerusalem. One of the saddest days in salvation history. And the Bible says that an angel went through the city and placed a mark on the forehead of the faithful remnant in Jerusalem. And that none of those of the faithful remnant were killed in the siege of Jerusalem. The mark of God. The book of Revelation describes this same mark, that we who are journeying through our life on earth, that as we are in danger of losing our souls through sin and disbelief and despair, that those of us who are faithful to God, we are marked by God. And He protects us and preserves us for eternal life. The mark of God. This evening, 
Those who are going to be baptized and confirmed, they will also be marked, claimed as God's own possession. And that mark can never be removed, can never be taken away. As I said, some saints, some spiritual people, they, they have the ability to see spiritual realities that most of us can't see. But see, angels, they can see who has been marked and who has not been marked. Angels could tell by coming into our church this evening. They could tell who has been baptized and who hasn't. Who has been confirmed and who hasn't. Who has been ordained and who hasn't. It is an indelible mark that is placed on our souls. Forever. It can never be lost. This evening, those to be baptized and to be confirmed, they will be marked as God's own possession. And they will be pledging themselves to God as His. That the rest of their life on this earth is no longer their own. But it belongs to God. He is their inheritance. They are his possession. So brothers and sisters, as these catechumens and candidates prepare to be baptized and confirmed, pray for them. That they might be worthy of this mark that they are about to receive. And that those of us who have already been marked that we might renew our commitment, that we might recognize that we have truly been marked, set apart. We belong to God. Our life is not our own, but His. At this time, I would like to call forward Hillary Grody, Hillary Grody, Elba Carillo, Calling forth those to be baptized. Father Bauer, members of St. Bernard Parish, and all of our guests, we now present to you those who are to be baptized tonight. For a long period of preparation, they have joined with us in prayer, study, and reflection. They have taken part in the life of this faith community. They will now stand in our presence one final time as they await the cleansing, life-giving waters of baptism. We invite these elect to come forward with their godparents when your name is called. Daisy Douglas. Lee Dickerson, Catalina Isabel Fernando, Gianni Rodolfo Carreño, Nicolás Damaso Lagunes, Artemisa Martinez Martinez. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these, our brothers and sisters, in the blessed hope that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help.
Almighty ever living God, by be present by the mysteries of your great love, and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we will have the blessing of the baptismal waters. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people, who keep vigil on this most sacred path, and for us to recall the wondrous work of our reaction and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us in the memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, elect of God, I now invite you to pledge your baptismal promises in the presence of this holy assembly. The response is, I do. Please say it loudly. Express the S, I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Let's do that again. Try this. <laughs> do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. In that case, we'll now call forward one by one each person for baptism. Tonight, to start the baptisms, we have an infant who's being baptized, Diego Sebastian Zanetti. So first, we will have the prayer of exorcism and anointing. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, que enviaste a tu Hijo al mundo para que nos librara del medio de Satanás, Espíritu del mal, y una vez arrancadas de las tinieblas, nos llevara al reino admirable de tu luz. Te pedimos que en este niño, libre ya del pecado original, habite el Espíritu Santo y sea así templo de tu majestad. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Para que el poder de Cristo Salvador te fortalezca, te unimos, te unimos con este odio de salvación. En el nombre del mismo Espíritu, Señor nuestro, que vive y reina por los siglos de los siglos. Diego, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think that exorcism prayer worked, right? Yeah. Uh, okay.
Now we'll have the anointing with sacred prism as a prefiguration of Diego's confirmation. Dios Todopoderoso, Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, que te ha librado del pecado y te ha dado la nueva vida por el agua del Espíritu, te una con el prisma de la salvación para que incorporara a su pueblo, seas para siempre miembro de Cristo, sacerdote, profeta y rey. transformado en una nueva criatura se ha revestido de Cristo Ustedes padres y padrinos, se les confía el cuidado de esta luz a fin de que este niño, que ha sido iluminado por Cristo, camine siempre como hijo de la luz. Now I present to everybody our newest member of St. Bernard Catholic Church, Diego Sebastian Zarabi. Let's give him a call.
Chani. Chani, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nicholas? Nicholas, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Artemis. Artemisa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now each of you will receive this baptismal garment. It's a sign of your baptism. And your soul has been made clean. You can place it around your necks, so raise your shoulders. Godparents and neophytes, please receive the baptismal candles as a sign that these catechumens have been enlightened by Christ. May these catechumens walk always as a child of the light, keep the fame, flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, we go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Let's give all these folks a hand for being back. Freshly baptized catechumens will light everybody's candle in the church. Just take four by heads and they bless me, they bless me, they bless
time I ask everyone in the congregation to also renew your baptismal promises. And the response is, I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and he has forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen.
Nicolás Damaso Lagunes, Artemisa Martínez Martínez, Brad Harwood, Christopher Runyon, Martin de Jesus Villa Hernandez, Jesse Torres, and Kathy McClaremont. Dear candidates, of your own free will, you've asked to be received in the full communion of the Catholic Church. You made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And I invite you in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic altar of the Lord Jesus, a sign of the Church's unity. And so I ask you, the response is, I do. Every candidate, please respond, I do, loudly, and I ask you this question. Do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? I do. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church, and His loving kindness has led you here, so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of this family. So, candidates, friends, let us pray to God our Father. That he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation, to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. Ask the candidates to bow your heads. Powerful God, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we'll pray over each of you individually. Now we will have the anointing with the sacred chrism. Padre Pio, sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Martin the Flores, sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Martin the Flores, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Our Lady 
Guadalupe and seal the gift of the Holy Spirit of the He's doing it. June Thaddeus, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Christopher, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Jude, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
sacrifice of yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Instead, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the pastoral mysteries may, by working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your power. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. As the hate of the Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious of the Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysostomus, John and Paul, Constance, and Damian, all your saints, pass through their merits and prayers in all things, defended by protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray. Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, and get spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before he was to suffer, he took bread and his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said a blessing, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory. Accept them as once you're pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, the holy sacrifice of Spas victim. And will pray we ask you, Michael God, command that these gifts be born in the hands of your holy jokes or altar and I am sight of your majesty. So that all of us who do this participation you receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Bless also your servants and those sinners. Open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some sharing for us with your holy apostles and martyrs. John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us to be seated in their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. In Christ our Lord. There may continue to make all these good things, O Lord. Sanctify them, fill them with light. Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reminder that after Mass there will be a reception out in the Narthex to celebrate our newly baptized and confirmed catechumens and candidates in Reportatoria. Que habrá una fiesta chiquita en el vestíbulo después de la misa para celebrar los alcúmenos y candidatos. The Lord be with you. With Bow your heads for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast. Come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.